All right. Good evening, everybody. Uh, it's a little after nine o'clock on sa uh, Saturday, Monday, July 20th, uh, 2020. Uh, I have an update for all of you for marching band related things. Uh, it's taken me weeks to process all this information. So hopefully it all makes sense. Um, uh, I have to just record this and email it out to everybody. If you've got questions, you're welcome to email them to me after the fact. I'm going to present. Let's see here. Right there. Okay, hopefully you all can see my screen. It says I'm presenting. Um, hopefully this works. Um, I will uh, put the digital copy of this in the email as well so you can follow along. If you want to just read the, the PowerPoint itself, that's fine as well. Um, so uh, let's see here. Um, so let me preface this by saying that out of an abundance of caution, this document is very detailed uh, with sources included at the end for any families that are interested in reading more. Um, my number one priority has and always will be the safety of kids. Uh, I did all the reading for you. If you really want to, you can find the sources at the end. Um, but let's see, another disclaimer, the policies outlined here are so designated by Douglas County School District, as well as recommendations put forth by several national band associations based upon research that is being done at the University of Colorado. Um, there's also a study at CSU uh, that I believe is going to get released next week as well. Um, uh, I have got gone to great lengths to be as informed as possible to keep all students as safe as possible. I served on the Douglas County Task Force this summer as well, and I've written an, a letter advocating for how I believe we should start the school year um, to Dr. Tucker and the Board of Education. Um, if you'd like to read it, let me know and I will send it to you. Uh, by the way, uh, Kevin Lung is one of the Leung Lung. I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name. He actually responded to me today, so that was kind of cool. Um, so they're listening to us. Um, let's see, as of today, school will still be in person. I don't know uh, if and when another decision may happen on that. Um, there's obviously still a lot of unknowns, so thank you for your patience. Um, I don't have a lot of answers. I will give you the ones that I do have. Um, I have advocated to Chaparral Principal Greg Gochi that I will teach all of my band classes outside in the fall if it means that we can have band. Um, so that is something I am trying to prepare myself for. Um, so students, that may be a reality that we face once we go back. Um, there's also potential to rehearse in larger spaces like the theater or the commons um, because we can more safely socially distance in some of our bigger classes. Um, scheduling decisions have not been made yet, to my knowledge at least. Uh, let's see, the document will outline safety guidelines and provide a highly suggested supply list for all students and hopefully answer any of the multitude of questions that you may have. Like I said before, I'll, I have my email on the last slide. You can email me if you've got other questions. And then finally, what's on this last slide? I will send a too long, didn't read version later in case anyone is curious um, with some of the other guidelines that, that people are suggesting. Uh, so first things first, I want to talk to you about some of the school provided supplies that, that uh, the Chaparral will be able to provide for you. Um, school instruments will be available to rent for the school year. Um, very limited quantities. Typically, it's more of the big instruments, tenor and berry sax, bassoon, uh, euphonium, tuba, trombone, marching brass instruments we've also got as well. Um, and then percussion equipment will also be provided, meaning the instruments themselves, uh, sticks and mallets we'll talk about later. Uh, hand sanitizer. Uh, one of the protocols that we are going to have to follow is a one-way traffic pattern where the students enter the class through one door and they exit through a different one. Um, I have requested those big vats of hand sanitizer available. Um, I believe they're mounting them to the walls in my class. Um, so there will be plenty of hand sanitizer available to any student who enters my class this fall. So just beware of that. Um, Let's see, alcohol-based solution to clean instruments as necessary. There are a couple of different options here, um, but some sort of 70% alcohol-based solution is what everyone what everyone is recommending, I suppose. So I will make sure that we have lots of that stuff available as necessary. Um, and then a mouthpiece spray for sanitization of, mouth, of mouthpieces as much as possible. Um, disclaimer, we will not be sharing any mouthpieces, but in, couldn't hurt to sanitize. Um, and then disposable medical gloves, these will only be used as necessary and uh, all of the, the band leadership uh, will be in a training this Wednesday um, to go over a couple of the safety protocols. And so the, the medical gloves will typically be used just by um, uh, da, 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 the leadership students, um, transporting equipment, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see what else here. Uh, for woodwinds, 
Um, Van Doren single reads will be available. Um, I'm willing to provide one read to every student, but the last couple of years, I've been kind of willy nilly about just handing out reads whenever. Um, so my budget's not in great shape right now. So read players, if you need more than one read, the second time you ask for a read, I will not give it to you unless you're also handing me money. Um, I, I, I just, I, I gotta recoup my budget a little bit. Um, I wish that money grew on trees. I wish I could hand you reads for free, but that's not the reality that we face. Um, $3 for clarinets, $4 for saxes, five for tenors and eight for Barry Sachs. Um, that's the that's the list price that I that I pay for them. So just be aware of that. Um, Oboe Masoon Jones reads will be available as well. Um, by the way, all these reads come in individual packaging, so there will not need to be any worries about um, you know transfer of germs or anything like that when we're uh, um, exchanging them, if you will. Uh, percussion students. And there will be select mallets that will be available and assigned to each student. Um, no sharing, obviously. Um, we are going to ask you to buy some uh, mallet packs for yourself as well. Um, all right. So this next slide is going to be su supplies that we ask you to provide for yourself. Okay. Um, Douglas County policy is going to require students to wear masks um, at all times indoors is my understanding. Um, and I would suggest more than one if you can afford it um, for during the week, uh, just because they can get dirty. Um, even just walking my dog tonight, mine got a little sweaty. It was a little gross inside. So um, you need your own instrument, obviously. Um, no sharing, once again. Uh, most percussion equipment will be provided. Um, let's say we're somehow in an online learning scenario. My goal percussionist is to be able to outfit all of you with a mallet instrument to also practice at home. Um, so that and some sort of drum pad, snare, or something or other. Um, We'll work through those details if we need to. Um, stick packs will need to be purchased by families. I am currently working with Denver Percussion, which is up the street in uh, Inglewood, just on the other side of uh, 470, um, on getting mallet packs for percussionists um, so that everyone can uh, have their own equipment and we don't have to worry about sharing, okay? Uh, athletic footwear. Uh, most students will be asked to stand to prevent the need to sanitize chairs. We're being told that if students sit in chairs, we have to sanitize them for 10 minutes uh, or, and, and let them sit for 10 minutes in between. If our, classing, if our passing period is only five minutes, that's not enough time to sanitize chairs. Um, not to mention it's more opportunities for germs to spread. So um, the only concert instruments that I believe will actually be sitting down would be concert tuba players or bassoons. I think everyone else could safely stand. So students, um, please make sure you're preparing to wear some comfortable shoes to school because in band class we're going to be doing a lot of standing this year. Um, balloons for breathing exercises. Um, these are going to be done at home. One of the uh, means of instruction that we're going to use this year is an app called Flipgrid, which is uh, something where the students will, you know, they make a video of themselves playing something and they send the video to me and then I will turn around and rather than typing feedback, I will be able to make a video of myself and just send a video back to them. Something I found last spring um, with Google Classroom is it was, t it was very time consuming for me to provide feedback when it was on Google Classroom because I either had to type it and make sure grammar was good, et cetera, et cetera, um, or I had to you know, fix things with my voice text, whatever, blah, 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 blah. So um, Flipgrid is an app we're going to use this year. Um, there will be some uh, permissions that I get out to you all uh, at some point about using that. Um, but the balloons are a visual way for me to see what's happening with the student's air. Uh, so we will be doing those. Those will be like a, a Flipgrid assignment where the kid puts the balloon up to their mouth and they blow it. Um, the balloons need to stay at home. Uh, I, uh, there is the potential, I suppose, for latex allergies. I don't know for a fact that we have anything like that, but I know some buildings don't even allow balloons in them because of that. So I don't want uh, balloons at school because I don't want uh, anyone to get sick because of a latex allergy. Um, Something we're going to also ask the students, they're highly recommended. It's not required, but we are going to ask you to uh, bring a folding music stand uh, for every single rehearsal, if you can. Um, it prevents the amount of contact that we are using with all the equipment in class. So if you have a folding music stand that you started with uh, at the beginning of your uh, like beginning band career, um, please plan on bringing that to and from school. Um, it'll just, it's, it prevents the number of students that are grabbing stands and stands that are moving around the class and stuff like that. Um, as long as we try to keep things within our own uh, zones, I think that'll help keep things safe. Um, that being said, school stands will be provided as well, but it also is gonna be expensive to uh, buy all the necessary materials to uh, sanitize everything, both chairs and stands. So we're trying to eliminate as much of that as, as we can. Uh, 
One other thing that is highly recommended, this is this just came out in the last couple of days. Um, CU has been doing a study on aerosol spread um, with instruments. Um, and one of the things that they are recommending is that uh, every instrumentalist that has a bell on it, on their instrument, gets an instrumental bell cover. Uh, so uh, I'm hoping that we may have a parent or two that may want to help sew some of those. It's like the stretchable, they recommend the stretchable spandex material. Um, I think it'd be really cool if we could get our music logo uh, on that as well. So if there's anyone that's interested in potentially sewing some bell covers, I know some of you have mentioned to me that you've sewn some masks. Um, I think it'd be kind of cool if we could pivot to maybe making some bell covers and maybe make that an, a quick and easy fundraiser for the band. Um, there are other websites that will sell bell covers, but it's one of those things where it will prevent the amount of germ spread, particularly if we're indoors. Um, I anticipate at the beginning of the year, we will hopefully be rehearsing in bigger spaces, like pr particularly outdoors is what I'm going to advocate for. Um, I don't know for sure if that's actually going to happen yet or not, but that's something that I am looking towards. Um, so some uh, section specific instruments or uh, supplies, woodwinds. Um, I would like you all to get a box of reeds, okay? Um, Van Doren are the best. Um, it's the highest quality cane that there is. The, the higher quality cane, the better sound you're going to get. Now, that being said, with families financial or potential financial situations, it might be worth it to invest in a single synthetic reed. Um, Legere is the best brand. Uh, th it's a single reed, so it's gonna be more expensive, but it's synthetic, so it's more durable. Uh, so that is something that we should potentially look into for this year, um, because I know families' financial situations might not be uh, great right now. So, uh, you know, it's easy to go through a box of reeds in the course of a month. If you buy a solid uh, synthetic reed, you can get through it, or it, it could last you several years. So um, parents, that could be a consideration for you uh, if you think that uh, it might be a better investment of your money. Um, I'm also asking all woodwinds to get a swab to clean out your instrument. I'm um, linked later in the presentation are instrument cleaning videos, um, and these are going to be really crucial. I'm going to put the onus on every student to uh, go in and watch the video for your specific instrument. Um, it's going to be one of those ways uh, that we all keep ourselves safe as we continue to work through the pandemic. Uh, brass, oh, uh, flutes. Uh, I jumped ahead of myself. Flutes. Um, I've seen some uh, evidence that face shields uh, will prevent air from getting into the room. It's one of those things that like hangs around your head. It's got a mask around it. I've got a, I've got one in the other room, but I'm not going to leave my screen right now. Uh, I want to keep presenting, so I will bring an example of that um, next week. Um, I purchased mine from a company called Rogue Fitness. I got five of them for fifteen dollars, I think. So they were three dollars a piece. Um, so. Uh, for flutes specifically because your air goes out into the room, um, I believe you are at the highest risk of uh, spreading aerosols because they're going directly into the class. So um, I think these these face shields, uh, it would be worth it to, to invest in some of these. Um, brass players, let's see, simpler for you, uh, a snake to clean out your instrument and a valve or key oil. Uh, mouthpieces, you don't need to clean them every day. Um, I would say, I mean, boiling it is typically how I've cleaned a mouthpiece. It's easy, you just put it in a pot, like you're gonna cook some mac and cheese or something, uh, get enough water to cover it and boil it, that cleans it out. Um, but there are other you know, solutions that you can use and we'll have other uh, protocols at school that we'll be able to use too if, if we need to. I and mean, another thing that I suggest is a polish cloth just to make sure your instrument is nice and shiny. Um, an old t-shirt is fine, but um, if you want to get like a silver polish rag, you can find one at King Supers, I think. Um, so all of those might be beneficial. And then percussion, as I mentioned before, the stick and mallet bag um, to be purchased, uh, we will um, communicate more information on that once I have it, hopefully by the end of the week. So just stay, stay tuned on that. Okay, so band camp for fall 2020. Um, Due to the cancellation of the competitive marching band season, uh, we are pivoting to a music only band camp, which means there's no marching. Instrumentalists will only play, color guard will only spin. This will also prevent potential germ spread because as we're moving around the field, aerosols could be traveling, et cetera, et cetera. So when we're doing music related things or color guard is spinning, we're all gonna be planted in the same place and we'll be you know, existing in that same zone for the two hours that we meet. I'll go over the schedule stuff in a little bit. Um, we will also stretch and maybe do some light physical activity to get the kids moving. Um, I think a lot of us have been sitting on our butts since we went into lockdown. So I think it's gonna be good for all of us to get up and moving uh, a little bit more than maybe we have been. So 
Uh, let's see. To limit the amount of contact, the new member camp scheduled for this Thursday and Friday, July 23rd and 24th, is canceled. There is no new member camp. Um, I just want to eliminate the amount of time that we are spending face to face just because I don't want to. The longer we spend together, the more risk there is of someone getting sick. Um, we will minimize the amount of indoor time utilized. So uh, at these band camps that we're doing next week and the week after, um, we will not do any rehearsing indoors. Um, um, the only indoor time there, there would be um, would be if we are going, if someone needs to go to the bathroom or if we're grabbing instruments um, from indoors. Uh, we're rehearsing early in the morning. So uh, in most cases, percussion have a separate schedule, but we're rehearsing early in the morning so that uh, hopefully weather is not a factor. Um, and it's the temperatures are also more manageable as well. Um, I suppose there's potential that color guard could be indoors, but my guess is facilities will be used. So I don't know that for a fact. Um, if you are indoors, by the way, masks are required at all times uh, as of now. So just be aware of that. Okay. Um, because we're not marching, what this means is all Chaparral Band students are invited. Some of you probably weren't planning on doing marching band in the fall. Well, guess what? Um, there's still a chance that we could start the school year online. And if we do that, there may not be a chance for us to make music together this school year, except for during band camp. So, um, I'm encouraging all students to come to this camp because uh, it'll give you a chance to meet some other people in your section. It'll give you a chance to experience band, uh, particularly at the high school level, all of you incoming freshmen. Um, I cannot wait to get to make music with you, whatever that looks like this year. Uh, and so my hope is that us getting together uh, before school starts in small groups for two hours at a time will uh, enable us to get the ball rolling for the beginning of the school year. Um, let's see. So it, uh, I want to make it loud and clear. This is also from Douglas County and it's also from me. Bandcamp is not required. We are not requiring you to do this. You will in no way, shape or form be penalized if you are not there. But I think one of my concerns coming into the school year is that none of us have been able to make music in an ensemble setting uh, since early March. And so anything that we can do to generate some momentum before the school year starts is going to benefit us greatly. Um, I think it'll hopefully help your lives start to feel like they're maybe going back to normal a little bit. This has been a really strange and stressful time for all of us. So please consider joining us next week. Um, Let's see what else here. Um, to, provide a, to provide a way for all students to receive feedback and to limit contact, as well as to provide accommodations for families who elect not to send their kids. And there will also be online individual video assignments uh, related to Bandcamp as well, so that I have the chance to provide feedback to students. Um, those of you who were not in my band classes in the spring, I really focused a lot on uh, individual skill building in band. And so my hope is to maybe do some of those types of things before the school year starts. If I get, if I can get to know you and get to know how you play your instrument, it's going to help me make more informed decisions on the music that we play and the activities that we do and, you know, just what our school year looks like in general. So my hope is that every single one of you will show up to band camp, even if it's for a couple of days, um, so that I can get a chance to get to know you, so that I get to meet you. There's some of you I've never really gotten a chance to sit down with. And then, uh, um, hopefully get a chance to figure out how you play your instrument as well. It's going to help me figure out how, you know, what music I need to choose, et cetera, et cetera. On um, percussion and color guard students, you will also take a similar approach with your instructors. We're going to be working on some video assignments there as well. And by assignment, it's not like you pass or you fail. It's like you do it, you send us a video, and then we provide you feedback. Um, you have to open yourself up a little bit. It's a little scary to do that, but it helps you get better at your instrument. I, my, my job here is to make you better at your instrument or help you spin better. I'll outsource that to the color guard people. All right, so let's talk about some guidelines because I know a lot of students are anxious around some of the things that we're going to end up doing for uh, band camp and the school year in general. So um, outdoor guidelines. I, I, I mentioned earlier the too long didn't read uh, thing. I'm going to do the indoor guidelines at another time. Uh, everything that we're doing over the next two weeks is going to be outdoors. So I'm only going to focus on the outdoor guidelines. So to start with, a mask should be worn at, by, or by all students and staff when you're not able to socially distance. When we are parked with music stuff, we will be socially distanced. You'll be six feet apart. So um, I would have your mask available. Um, I have personally have masks that wrap around my head, so I can just pull them down. 
uh, and let them sit there. Um, if you have the ones that just wrap around your ears, um, it might be worth it to maybe try to just fold it down on the bottom side of your face or just have the mask around. Um, when we're making transitions, let's say we go get water, I'm going to ask everyone to put their masks on so that as we mix and mingle, as we're going back to get our stuff or whatever, um, you have your mask on. But when we're playing, if, we're, if it's outdoors, we do not need to have masks on, okay? Uh, Rehearsal will occur at a minimum of a six foot distance. So students will be able to choose to take masks off when appropriate. Okay. Something that we all need to understand is that we have to err on the side of caution uh, as we slowly start to re-enter this. Um, by Chasser rules, if anyone tests positive for COVID, they could shut us down for two weeks minimum. And I think we all are, you're all signed up for band. So in theory, you want to actually experience band. So we have to take care of each other and take care of ourselves by doing things, washing our hands, uh, using hand sanitizer when necessary, and wearing masks, okay? And that does not just happen at rehearsal. It also has to happen outside of rehearsal. We can't just use those regulations in rehearsal because it's outside of rehearsal that, that we're likely to get sick because we come in contact with different other people and stuff like that, okay? So please do the right thing and make sure that you're doing your part to take care of not only yourselves, but the rest of your band family. Um, when possible, a mask with a small slit for a mouthpiece access or for mouthpiece access should be worn while playing. So you, you're wearing your mask. This is something that came out last week. Um, some of these studies are advocating for a mask that has some sort of like slit inside of it for, you know, you do, you know, you tuck your mouthpiece inside and you play that way. Um, and so those are things that I will, I will task uh, all of you with on your own. Um, if you would like to play with a mask on and be able to continue to do that, you can. Um, I think that particular guideline is really more for indoors and not necessarily outdoors. But um, like I said, I think it's going to be beneficial for us to take, I, I would rather be overly cautious than underly cautious. Okay. The last thing I want is for someone in the band or someone in the, you know, parent of the section of the band family uh, to get sick because we're not taking the proper precautions. Okay. Uh, in instrument groups where a mask cannot physically be worn, the mask should be worn over the chin and replaced during periods where the student is not playing. Okay, one of the things that we're going to have to train ourselves to do, particularly if we are indoors, is no talking. If, you, if you're not wearing a mask, you are not talking because it's easier to spread uh, particles if you don't have a mask and you are talking. When I am instructing, if I'm if I'm socially distanced, I will I will probably keep the mask off in case people need to read lips. But let's say we're in an indoor teaching situation. I will have a mask on and I'm going to have a microphone with me as well. So I'm not going to talk real loud because the louder I talk, the further my particles go. I will have a, a microphone with me um, and I will be talking quietly so that you can hear me through the speakers and you don't have to worry about my particles going anywhere. Okay. Uh, students belongings will be socially distanced as well. The leadership will be going over that, but long story short, your stuff is going to be six feet away from so the next person's stuff when we are outdoors. Um, it's just a way for us to, to, um, be safe at all times with that in mind. Also, there's absolutely no sharing of water whatsoever. Um, you need to bring enough water to be able to last for, uh, two hours. Uh, no sharing of water. That's how things can go awry pretty quickly, okay? All right, so summer rehearsal procedures. Um, this is in the, uh, uh, oh my gosh, the waiver that you will uh, get sent, it's linked in this presentation and it's also going to be in your email. Um, I'll put it in the band app as well, those of you who are signed up for that. So before rehearsal, there will be a check-in every single day. Um, families must fill out the disclaimer that's linked here in order for uh, students to participate. Um, it's a liability thing, essentially. Um, and then they get you to understand these, these types of uh, check-in procedures. Masks should be worn by all students and staff when you are not able to socially distance. I would say when we're in line, we need to socially distance. Parents, I'm gonna ask you if you're dropping your child off um, inside the, the uh, loop at the front of the chaparral, drop them off by the, the uh, flagpole. And assuming they do not need to go indoors, what they will do is walk up that walkway down toward the parking lot where the marching band uh, practices. Uh, hopefully you'll notice that by the time we get there. Um, like I said, this is for all band students. It's not just marching band students, um, but we are going to have to do temperature checks and all of those types of things. Um, it says, uh, let's see here. You'll have to answer questions about in the last 24 hours, have you had a fever, cough, sore throat, shortness of breath, and any potential contact with anyone with COVID? If a student has uh, a temperature above 100 degrees, we will ask them to step aside, wear their mask, and wait 15 minutes. Um, if they 
are above 100 degrees a second time, we will send them home, okay? Um, this is to help prevent the spread of the virus. Um, even writing, uh, we, I, meant, or I experienced this last week with some of the leadership who helped me get some things ready last week. Um, writing in a hot car can rise the temperature of your body. So you know, just be aware of those types of things. Um, I have to keep track of this data for three months. So um, every single day we will be doing these things, um, at least over the summer. I don't know what the beginning of the school year procedure looks like. Um, students will only enter the building if necessary to retrieve rehearsal materials. So students with big instruments and those types of things. What we're gonna ask students to do to, to prevent as much um, potential contact as possible is bring all of their materials to and from rehearsal. Uh, we will have leadership students enter the building to get necessary materials to distribute out to everybody. Um, and so if you're not on the leadership team, Hopefully, uh, in, a, in a minimal way, uh, we will need to actually enter the building for, for various equipment needs, okay? Uh, during rehearsals, um, students must have access to your mask at all times. We will let you know when it's safe to take it off. We will also let you know when you need to put it back on. Uh, we need the mask compliance, okay? Um, even if it's outdoors, if we ask you to put a mask on, I expect that the mask will go on, okay? Um, there's, I, I, do not want someone to get sick because someone is not taking the mask guidelines seriously. It's Douglas County policy. It is my job at all times to make sure that all of my students are as safe as possible. Okay. So um, I hope I'm being clear about that. Um, bathrooms will only be for emergencies only and masks will be required while indoors. So because we're only meeting for two hours at a time, my suggestion is to hold your potty for as long as you can before you leave for school and then do everything in your power to hold it for the two hours that you're at school. And then hopefully you can take care of that back at home. It's safer that way. Um, I believe there's also pretty specific procedures that the custodial staff is supposed to use for cleaning restrooms as well. So there's going to be designated restrooms that people have to use, just FYI. Okay, um, there will also be no access to water fountains, so bring enough water for yourself to last for two hours. Um, we're concerned about the potential spread of germs through the water fountains, et cetera, et cetera. So um, what we recommend are those big like gallon jugs that you can get at uh, Walmart or Target. Um, you get a half gallon jug, you could go buy one of those plastic jugs for like a dollar at King Supers and use that if you want to. Um, the idea is that we wanna make sure that the, the students are hydrated um, and that we're not sharing. Okay, uh, and then let's see, after rehearsals, uh, students will head directly home. Okay, parents are to wait in cars and not enter the rehearsal area. It just maintains that social distancing that we're asking for. Um, students will not enter the building at the end of rehearsal unless they are putting equipment away. And in fact, students, I think, will probably just ask leadership to put equipment inside as much as possible. Um, but if there are other students that need to uh, get indoors in order to provide safe social distancing we may need to stagger entry and those of you who have i, I think most of you have been in the, the the band hallway at chaparral if everyone's in there at their lockers we're not socially distanced um it's a close space um, with the recycled air inside the building there's just there's chance for spread so we're going to eliminate um, as much as possible the number of uh, students indoors and as it stands right now i think i'm only allowed to have 10 10 people indoors at a time right now anyway so Okay, uh, the more band camp details. So the dates, uh, next July 27th through the 31st. Um, as of now, the plan is 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. for Woodwinds and Brass. Um, we have to, to go early in the morning because weather is better. Uh, because of the current protocols that we have right now, if it's like raining, for instance, I can only take 10 students inside. And so it wouldn't necessarily be fair for me to go. I pick you 10 and the rest of you get to go home. Um, there's, you'll notice a little star there. I'll get to that at the bottom of this slide. Um, we're, all, uh, we're going 6 to 8 p.m. for percussion specifically. Um, that is to honor our percussion staff's work schedules. They have, uh, one of them at least has a day job. Uh, so we are going to meet in the evening for percussionists. Um, oh, dang it, I forgot to put this in here. I'll add it to, uh, to this before I email it to everybody. Color Guard is meeting from 10 a.m. to noon. So they will overlap with Woodwinds and Brass a little bit. We will just make sure that students are not uh, we we stay separate the entire time, okay? Um, for all of these students as well, the afternoon time will be for students to work on video assignments so they can receive feedback. In a normal year, band camp is typically an eight hour day. We do two, three and a half hour blocks and an hour long uh, meal break. Um, and so it's gonna be hard to get eight hours worth of work done in two hours this year. Um, the goal on this would be that we 
do some some fundamental work, uh, you know, long tones and scales, and we will get to some fun music as well. Um, but we work on that stuff in groups, and then I'm going to send you home with an individual video assignment that I want you to make, and then I will provide video feedback for you in the meantime, uh, so that we're all continuing to grow. Okay. Uh, August third through the seventh. Um, it would be the second week that we had band camp scheduled. Um, right now we're tentatively going with four to 6 p.m. for Woodwinds and Brass. Um, that is the first of two teacher work weeks for me. Um, we will do, once again, two hour uh, sectionals those days, um, socially distanced, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, let's see, six to 8 p.m. once again will be percussion those two days, or those two days, those five days. By the way, all of this is subject to change. Um, if someone were to test positive, we may have to shut down completely, which I really hope is not the case. So, you know, please continue to uh, do the take the steps necessary to make sure you don't catch the virus. Okay. Um, we also might try to do more rehearsals August 10th through the 14th. Uh, now that there's no school that week, um, I don't know that we'll go five days, um, but maybe a couple of days that week to once again continue to get the ball rolling. Um, I do have concerns about where kids are at from a social, social and emotional learning standpoint. So some of the rehearsals that week may be more checking in. Like I may ask all the freshmen to come one day. Um, we just kind of sit down outdoors, and you know, I have a, a chance to sit with them and go, okay, tell me, tell me how you're feeling right now. Tell me what some of your learning needs are and those kinds of things um, just so I can get the ball rolling before the school year starts. Um, I have a very, very heavy teaching load. Um, so I want to, I, I do everything I can to get in contact with the kids and, you know, get to know them and those types of things. Um, and I really much, I really value uh, the time that I get with the band students before the school year starts because I don't have 85 other things going on at the same time. Um, so uh, times would be the same as August 3rd through the 7th. Once again, it's a teacher work week for me. So I will be uh, still at school. Um, what the size of the group is, I don't know yet. The guidelines that Douglas County has provided are only through August 9th right now. So beyond that, I don't know if we'll even be allowed to meet. So that, that's all tentative. Um, and then the star I mentioned at the top. Um, so Woodman's and Brass, tentatively 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Um, in the event that we have a bigger turnout than I anticipate, um, we may need to split this group into two separate groups um, because we it's possible we would exceed the threshold that Douglas County has provided of 50 students. Um, it'd be a great problem to have. If, our, if every single student shows up, we would have to face that issue. Um, and that would mean that uh, I would give students the option to show up from 9 to 11 a.m. or to, uh, 12 to 2 p.m., okay? So um, we will cross that bridge if we get to it. And, oh, there's an extra bullet point. Whoops. All right. More details. Let's see. Okay. So let's talk about fees. Um, I know there's a lot of, I've gotten lots of questions and comments from people in, in the three years that I've been the director at Chaparral about marching band fees. Okay. Um, this year, the competitive portion of the season has been canceled. As of now, I don't know if they're going to allow us to be at football games at all. So for this portion of band camp, th this, this set of fees is only for band camp specifically because beyond that, I don't know what we're allowed or not allowed to do. Okay, but what we are asking for is $10 a day. So if your kid were to come for the 10 days of band camp that are currently scheduled, it would be $100 maximum. Um, you would you can be paid or you can pay that up front or you can be billed later. Let's say your kid only comes eight days because you leave early for one weekend. We would charge you eighty dollars instead of a hundred dollars. Um, you only be charged for the days that your kid is here. Um, it's essentially a five dollar an hour babysitting service, and your kid gets better at their instruments. Okay. Um, I want to note that I am not paying myself at all out of those fees. Uh, my school budget is in really rough shape right now. So essentially I would be donating, I am donating any money that I would make back to my school budget because I'm just trying to recoup some fees. Okay. I'm doing all of this out of the kindness of my heart. Um, and some of the fees will also go to help paying the staff that donates their time and energy to your kids as well. Um, our color guard and percussion staffs are uh, far more qualified to teach those students than I am. So that really helps. Uh, we'll also have some other volunteer uh, adults that will be around to help with the uh, woodwinds and brass during band camp um, as their schedules allow. Um, if the marching band season is extended beyond the beginning of the school year, there will be an additional 50 to $100 fee depending on what we are allowed to do. Okay. So, um, like I said before, every student is invited to the band camp. Band camp this year is not for marching band. It's for any band student that is signed up for symphonic band or wind ensemble. Okay. The idea is that we're trying to get the ball rolling on picking up our instruments, making good sounds, um, and hopefully getting some sort of ensemble playing in 
before the school year starts because there is the very real possibility that we go back into remote learning if the if the virus flares up. So uh, every single student enrolled for symphonic band or wind ensemble is invited to band camp. Okay, um, ten dollars a day. You can pay up front. Uh, you could pay every day if you really want to, but parents, if you decide you don't want to pay at the front, or, uh, I will just keep track of how many days the kids show up and we will bill you after the fact. Okay, let's see. Um, a disclaimer that these fees are significantly lower than they would be in normal circumstances. Okay, uh, for any any parents that are or families that are new uh, to Chaparral this year, uh, we charged $550 for our competitive season last year. That in includes the fees for competitions and buses and staff fees and paying for costumes and buying props and buying flags and feeding the kids and feeding parent volunteers and all of those things. Most of those things are going away this year. So we're cutting back significantly on the fees themselves. Okay. So I just wanted to put that disclaimer in there so that if hopefully when our lives are back to normal in fall of 2021, um, I don't get a bunch of angry parent emails. Well, why are fees $350 more this year than they were last year? Um, so just thought I'd put that disclaimer in there. So um, by the way, so you know, my understanding is that the football team charges $700 this year. Um, so even our $550 is pretty reasonable. Um, so, and I've done research with other Douglas County bands, et cetera, et cetera, to kind of see what they are charging as well. So uh, some other resources for you, this is stuff that you're gonna need to do individually on your own students, okay? Um, instrument cleaning, uh, the University of North Texas has put together videos explaining how to clean your instrument. Uh, their um, uh, initiative is called We Mean Clean. Their mascot is actually the mean green, so it rhymes, but um, uh, that initiative can be found at that link that you see below. Um, they've made videos for flute, clarinet, saxophone, trumpet, oboe, bassoon maybe, um, baritone and tuba, they don't have any resources. Um, so baritone tubas, we'll talk about how to clean your instruments later. Um, and for those of you who may be visual learners and you want to read it, um, the National Association for Music Education, which goes by NAFME, also put together a list of instrument cleaning guidelines and it can be found on their website right there, okay? So actually it's on the NFHS website, but click on the link and you'll find the information. Okay, let's see what else. Um, so. Biggest thing, I need every every single person who's planning on coming to fill out that survey. It's a three question survey, name, instrument, if you're coming to the camp or not, okay? Um, I, I need to know how many numbers to expect if we are going to exceed that 50 person threshold, which nothing would make me happier in this world other than the virus going away. Um, nothing would make me happier if we had more than 50 students here next week. Um, and it means that we have to split into smaller groups, okay? Um, Let's see here. Um, please email me if you have questions. Um, I've my email has been very busy. I will get to them. I, I I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. This situation is very overwhelming for me as a band director because there's just so many opportunities for um, community spread in a band room. So I assure you, I have read hundreds of pages of documents and attended three different conferences this summer to be as educated as possible. So thank you for your patience as I put all this information together. Um, I assure you, my number one priority has and always will be the safety of kids. Okay. On um, the Shepherd Band website has also been updated. Please go check it out when you get a chance. Okay, um, it's still in the process of being updated. There's some other resources I'm going to add as I as I get some time this week. Um, and then some other reminders. Once again, don't forget to RSVP. Same link there as it is at the top. And then uh, don't forget to bring a signed disclaimer with you if you attend the band camp next week. Band camp this year is for all students. We are not doing any marching. All are welcome. Come be in band with your friends, okay? Please, pretty please. Okay, um, for anyone who wants to feel like they're being educated, um, I have included links to all of the studies that I have read through to include information on this. So if anyone really wants to look, uh, I have included links to all of that. So uh, that's the extent of my presentation. Um, I will email a PDF of this and I will uh, upload this link to YouTube so you can all watch it. Uh, one other thing, I will add it, but it's not in the video here. Color Guard, your band camp times for the first week are 10 a.m. to noon, 10 a.m. to noon, okay? Um, my apologies for not adding that in there uh, before I started, before I hit record on this. So um, like I said before, if you have questions, let me know. Um, please sign up for the band app. Uh, you can look at the band website for information on how to do that. Um, that will, uh, 
that's the easiest way for me to communicate on mass to everybody. So um, I will look for your questions in my email. Um, please stay safe, uh, wash your hands, wear masks when you need to. And uh, I am really looking forward to seeing everybody next week. So um, have a great rest of your week and we'll be in touch soon.